Welcome to Excel Table Talk, our monthly web show for the Excel community. Each month on Excel Table Talk, I'll interview a PM about their favorite features and what they're working on. And this month, uh, Carlos joined me. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Before we jump in, I wanted to quickly highlight uh, the community. As always, please join the community. Go to office.com slash Excel slash community. On here, you can see that we have different areas. We have things for formulas, macros, VBs, things like that. So you can ask any type of questions. This is also where we have the Excel Table Talk embedded so you can actually see the show. Now, one last thing I like to do, we always highlight highlight the community member of the month. And this month, I like to uh, highlight Ingeborg. Ingeborg is actually an MVP. We have a lot of MVPs on the network. It's great to see them there. And Ingeborg is really active. She's just a really great person uh, altogether. They come out once a year, and we meet with them and the MVPs. And she's really, really nice. So I want to thank Ingeborg for being on the community and just being part of the whole Excel community as a whole. So with that, thank you. Carlos. Talk a little bit about yourself. What do you do? What do you work on? Uh, things like that. Yeah, certainly. I'm a, a, a PM in the Excel team, and my team is focused on the end-to-end -end development, product development cycle for the BI and analytics features in Excel. I love the BI stuff that we have. Can, can you show us things of that? Like, can you show us something you're working on? And... Yeah, certainly. So um, right here we have uh, Excel 2016, and we're going to start in the data tab. And for this scenario, we're assuming we are uh, a bicycle shop, and we're doing some analytics uh, on the revenue and sales trends. So I'm going to start bringing some data into Excel. And as you can see here, in Excel 2016, one of the big investments we've done is bringing this capability, formerly known as Power Query, into Excel natively. So you can see this space right here uh, where you have Get and Transform capability. So what I can do here, if I open this Get Data dropdown, you can see a number of connections, essentially. Each of these uh, folders has a little uh, a number of connections. Um, and one of the big investments that we're doing uh, in this space is continuously adding connectors every month. Excel is really designed for a modern world where you have data all over the place. And, you know, there's just an explosion mm -hmm. of data sources um, that are outside of Excel. You know, you can have uh, text files, CSV files. You can have data in the cloud. You can have data in, in a number of different places in different machines. So this is really uh, the place where you would go to connect to all of those data sources and bring them into Excel. Right. I'm going to connect uh, to a data set that, that I already have in this device, which is a CSV file. And I'm going to bring the product list uh, of all the bicycle-related products I have for my company. So when I click OK, what Excel is doing is looking at that CSV file and really giving me a preview of the CSV. And it's already uh, deciphering the shape and form of the CSV and automatically breaking everything into the right columns for you. Of course, you can adjust this if you want, but uh, we automatically do this step for you. Now, you'll see a few options here. Uh, you have Edit, you have Load, and Load To. What I'm going to choose here is Load To. And essentially, this gives you flexibility in choosing where you want to route the data that you just connected with. So essentially, we have some options. If you are ready to bring this directly into the grid, uh, you can select either table, pivot table, or pivot chart. But what I want to do here, connecting to what we were talking about earlier about uh, the data model and Power mm -hmm. Pivot, I want to create a connection only, because I don't want to display this in the grid. And then I want to save this to the data model. This is how you go over a million rows as well, right? Now we can go like unlimited, pretty Ex much. Exactly. There is this, this uh, notion or this idea that I see all the time that Excel is limited to one million rows. Uh, but that is that is incorrect. Excel can uh, handle a, a data sets much, much larger than that, multiple, multiple uh, tens of millions of rows, if, if that's what your analysis needs. So the way you do that is you route it uh, through Get and Transform and into the data model. Yeah. I mean, the data model does m much more than that, and we'll get into that mm -hmm. uh, as well later in the demo. But that is one of the key pieces that, that the data model is good for. Uh, so I'll click OK. And what Excel is going to do here is going to, again, connect to that data source, bring it through Power Query. We don't have to do any transformations to this data set. And then it's going to save it to the data model. And But people could do a whole bunch of transformations in there as well, right? So in Power Query, you can split your data. You can clean it up. You can do anything exactly. you want. Exactly, exactly. And we're using a local data, data source today just because of demos. But, Correct. You know, we could do in from anywhere, really, from the internet or from any data source. Yeah, exactly. So what I'll do here next, uh, let me just highlight that we loaded 195 uh, rows into the data model. Uh, and you can get a little preview here. But uh, as you said, we can connect to multiple data, data sets, mm -hmm. uh, either local or from the cloud. For this case, I'm going to connect to an, another data set, which is the transactional data for the analysis that I want to do. is a month-by-month sales data. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to point to this file. And what Excel is going to do here is going to bring a 
preview of the data set. And I can right away tell already that this data set is not completely clean, right? I can see that the headers are not... This is what my data, data looks like every time exactly. I try to connect to something. And we know based on our research that most of the time that analysts spend is really on the early, the initial stages of the analysis. You know, connecting to the data, data but more importantly, cleaning the data, adjusting the data, manipulating the data, getting it ready for, you know, getting insights from mm -hmm. it. Uh, so in this case, instead of loading, I am going to click Edit. And what this is going to do is going to open the Get and Transform editing experience. Uh, so this is a whole immersive experience that's been specifically designed to help you transform and clean your data. So what you see here, again, is a preview of the data. And what you see here is a, a set of options for cleaning and transforming the data. So what I want to do here is I can select this top row. And one of the options here is to use the first row as the header. Mm -hmm. So automatically, you see that that jumps up, jumps up to the top. Now, the next thing I want to do, and this feature, by the way, is I, I love this. This alone makes, makes this product like, like so worth it for me. So a lot of times, the, data, the shape of the data is not set up in a way that it's easy to use in a pivot table, which yeah. is what we want to do in this case. So Get and Transform has this feature called Unpivot. So if I select this column and I right click and I select this uh, Unpivot Other Columns is what I want to do. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to change the shape of the data so that all my month and year data and all my values are essentially in and a Now column. you can actually work with it. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now there's a few other tricks I can do with this. Uh, with a few clicks, I can select this. Uh, and of course, I want to have month and year separate so I can uh, create some filters mm -hmm. uh, to do the analysis that way. So I'm going to click, uh, click split by column uh, delimiter. And while you do that, like the, the cool thing of this is that anytime the data source changes, it applies all those steps again. You never have to do this again. Yeah, exactly. And so you can see uh, here on the right, uh, I have all of the steps that I have taken recorded, and I can go back in time and see exactly the state of the data uh, before and after every one of those transformations, Very which cool. is which is which is fantastic. Uh, now, what I'm going to do now is, is going to split uh, this column into the month and the year. Um, and I know uh, just by looking at the data that the limiter is a comma. So I'm going to click OK, and it automatically splits it into two columns. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few other things I want to do. So now I can name these uh, columns. I'm going to name it month. I'm going to name this year. And this here is my sales. I see a few empty cells here that are not yeah. going to help me in my analysis. So I want to clean this up and remove empty cells. And then uh, the last thing I want to do here is change the data type to currency because this is sales data. Now that the data is clean, what I can do is I can load this to the data model with my other table yeah. and then um, build some analysis on top of that. Well, let's see it. So I will check, uh, again select close and load. I also uh, just want uh, to create a connection and I want to add this to the data model. I'm going to click OK and this is going to load my data into the data model. And I can see that uh, 1,400 rows ha have been loaded. Yeah. Now, to open the data model, um, you again go to the Data tab, and you click on this button called Manage Data Model. When I click this, uh, we're actually going to go into uh, an immersive experience called Power Pivot, which is the editing experience to, to view, uh, manipulate, and build analytics on top of the data model. Okay. So as you can see here in the bottom, I have both tables that I added. I have the product list, and I have the sales by, sales by month data. And one of the capabilities that the data model has is to create relationships between data sets. You can think of this as uh, essentially having a database within Excel, having the best of access. I was going to say, um, this looks like the old like access database, how I would drag stuff around and set the connections. Exactly, and, and it's pretty magical. And I mean, if you're familiar with, uh, with, with databases such as Access, then you would be familiar with this. Um, so essentially, it works the same way. You drag uh, the related uh, field from one uh, table to the other. So here I'm telling Excel that there's a relationship between product and the products list and my product field in sales month, and it creates a relationship like that. And I think this is truly magical. Another way in which you could do this that we see oftentimes mm -hmm. is really doing VLOOKUPs uh, in the grid. So this is just yeah. a much more powerful, imagine I would have to do VLOOKUPs on all of these columns and then manage and update all of the changes and however many hundreds or thousands of formulas. Uh, this requires no formulas, just a drag and click and you create uh, this relationship between the two, uh, the two tables. It's, it's very sweet. What I'm going to do now is create a report um, based on these tables that I've added to the data model. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I'm going to uh, select the pivot table button within the home tab. Now, what this is going to do is going to ask me where I want to put my pivot table. 
and I click OK and this generates a pivot table. Now here you can see the two tables that I added to uh, my data model. And if I expand this, I can see all the fields that I have access to. Yeah. Now the cool thing about having built a relationship is that now I can pull fields from both of these at the same time and look at some trends that way. So first I'm going to select my sales field and put it into the value so I can see that I sold $20 million worth of uh, bicycle equipment. Uh, but then I want to look at some more detail, right? So I want to look at years um, by, say, category. So right away you can see uh, the distribution of your sales by fields on two different tables. And this right. would be a lot of work, like if you would have to create all the formulas yourself, if you had this exactly. in tables and, exactly. and different sheets, yeah. And just with a few clicks I've built, I've built a report. Very cool. So there's of course a lot more I can do with the pivot table now that I have it uh, on the grid. I can add more detail. So say I want to add subcategory detail in mm -hmm. here. Uh, but then again, if I go to the insert tab, uh, there's a few options here uh, that, are, that make this really powerful. Okay. So I can add a slicer, which will make it really easy for, for me or for others that are uh, consuming this report to, to, to do analysis uh, and, and consume this, this data. So say I want to have a color and a category slicer. I'm going to select those two and let me move these over here. So now what I can quickly do is without even touching the pivot table, I can quickly filter to all the products that have you know, multiple colors or blue colors or red color, you know, the mm -hmm. red color, or I can filter my report by category. So if I, can, if I just want to look at the bikes That's or if I just nice. want to look at, uh, at the clothing. And get and transform is really my, like my all time favorite Excel <laughs> feature. It's just it is so nice once you, you see how you can like clean up your data and you trim it and it just keeps doing it every time the data source comes in. It's just, I love it. Yeah, I agree. It's super powerful. Like one, one story I often tell is I, before I came to the PM team, I used to work in finance and um, we used to, you know, spend day in and day out in Excel doing all sorts of, of you know, crazy reports and, mm -hmm. and cool things with Excel. But I just, I just wish I had some of these tools back then. It would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, Thanks for showing. It's so, it's so cool. Before we wrap up, um, one thing we always do on the show is um, a feature of the month. Can, can, you, can you show me your favorite feature in Excel? Like the, the thing that you believe is, is saves you the most time. Like every month we show this with the community. So I would love to see what you think is your. Yeah, certainly. It's, it's hard to pick one because there's just so much, so many cool things you can do with Excel. But one, one thing in particular that I found really useful lately, and, and I've gotten a bunch of feedback from customers that I find, they find is super useful, is another capability of, of Get and Transform. So let me go to another Excel file here. Um, and then for, if you imagine in this particular scenario that we were talking about this bicycle shop. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you had subsidiaries all over the world that are submitting data, uh, to, you know, their sales data or their forecast data, and you need to aggregate all of that. Historically, you may have copied and pasted all of the data manually into one report to aggregate it and have a consistent view. Yeah. What you can do with Get and Transform, and in this case, I have these reports already in a, in a folder. Um, what you can do with Get and Transform is essentially uh, point to that folder and suck all that data in uh, pretty much automatically. So let me show you how to do that. You again go to the Get and Transform uh, drop down. You select from file, and you select from folder. It, and so I, I come from the SharePoint community, right? And um, right under there was an option yes. where you can even exactly. point at a SharePoint site and say yes. get all the documents in the document library of SharePoint. Right? Exactly. I just have to give a shout it's, out to SharePoint there. It's fantastic, right? So if you have your, your files on, on SharePoint or, or in your local device, yeah. you can do that. For this case, I so have cool. a local device, but it works exactly the same way. Um, so I'm going, it's going to ask me where the, the, the files are. I'm going to select my folder cells by subsidiary where I had those files from my different subsidiaries and I'm going to click OK and OK. And what this is going to do is again, it's going to scan that uh, library and it's going to pull all of the files from that folder. So here you can see I have my five files and I'm going to combine them and I want to load them directly into a pivot table. Sweet. And so the cool thing of this, of course, is anytime somebody drops a new file into your folder or into your SharePoint site, it just starts showing, uh, showing up and appearing uh, in your data source. Exactly. Very cool. So again, I'm going uh, to select pivot table here. Yeah. And I'm going to click OK. So now what I can see here is I have all the fields from all of those files. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to select uh, my source. And if I want to look at sales for, say, July 2016, I can aggregate all of this data uh, with just a few clicks. Yep. 
That's a really cool tip. Thanks for sharing that. And thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. As always, I'd like to invite everybody, please join our community, office.com slash Excel slash community. Carlos and I are there. We're going to answer your questions and love to have a discussion with you there. Let us know what you'd like to see on the next episode as well. Thank you. Thank you.